Hi, welcome to Oh My Makery. In this tutorial I will be showing you step by step how to make the easy peasy hug me squeeze me cushion. Okay, it's knitted entirely in garter stitch. In this version we have one side with the garter stitch running one way and on the other side it runs across but really you could do it exactly how you wanted to do it. And in this tutorial I will be showing you how to do the zip enclosure. You can do it with ribbons and I can also show you how to do that but that will be in a separate tutorial. So let's make a start. You'll have your two squares ready for your cushion and at this stage you might panic because it will look really small on your cushion cover but don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to set the zip first of all, so it's not as frightening as it looks. So now we've pinned the wrong sides of our cushion cover together in readiness for the zip to go in. So we've pinned the edges there and then we open it up. Now your zipper is going to go somewhere in the middle and we will do this first before we sew the sides up so that the zip works nicely because we can ease any discrepancies in as we sew around but if you've sewed around and the top edge is a little bit squint your zip won't sit properly. So you will position the zip where you want it to go which will be more or less in the middle and we just pin it along not stretching the wool at all be easy to do that so you just want to treat the wool fabric gently because if you don't it'll end up as a big puckered edge and we want to get as close to that edge as possible. So this edge here, the zip, you want to get pretty close to that. I'm not a fan of very obvious zips to be honest. And I like to use pins with nice coloured heads so you can see them, otherwise sometimes they get left in. Go in here. One more should do it. There, that's in that side. And then we do exactly the same on the other side. So just a gentle pin there, not pulling at all on the fabric. So now both sides of the zip are pinned in. And we're just going to pin gently, not pulling on the fabric at all, the ends together. So we're here. And at the top there of the closure, we're going to need to bring it in so there isn't a big old hole when you finish your cushion cover. So that's the zip. Hold on to the edge, just check that it opens up nicely, which it does. And then we're ready to start sewing. So there's different sorts of wool needles. There's this one with the big loop, which we use for the chunky wool. But to sew the zip, we're going to use something a bit more lightweight and we're going to use a much thinner yarn. So in your kit you would have got some lightweight wool. This is what we're going to sew the zip with. Um, and it's easier if you undo the zip. Starting at one end of the zip, you're going to push the needle through
I'm using quite a long thread here. So you just need to be a little bit careful so it doesn't get tangled. And we're going to secure this to start. And we're going to make a feature, if you like, of the zip a bit. If you're doing the ribbon option, again, that's another feature. So now you've gone in and out a couple of times. This isn't going anywhere. You've got the yarn there. So then just simply with a running stitch, so that's in and out, you come through. Sometimes it gets a little bit stuck and you've got to ease it. You've got pins and all sorts. So as you go, take the pins out. it's there. So again, just a small stitch and we keep it small because the smaller the stitches are, the stronger the zip will be in the fabric. There. Now you can see that you can barely see those little stitches. You're going to sew all the way along that side and all the way along that side. So I've got to the top of the zip and I'm going to put a stitch in, into the zip, so we're there. And I'm going to pass the yarn over to the other side. So we're here, and you might want to then just do that one or two times more. We're going to make a little closure there at the back of the zip. Just two, two little neat stitches, leaving you free then to run down this side. So here we've sewn down both sides of the zip. At this stage we do it up and we repeat. So what we did at the top we do at the bottom. We bring the two edges together and we just put a stitch in at the end, bringing those two edges together a little bit more. It makes quite a nice finish here. We're going to be sewing all the sides up in a moment, but that's just getting the zip in. And you'll see now it works nicely. We've opened up the zip and we've pinned all the way around the cushion with the right sides together. Okay, So this is the wrong side of the stripey, although I quite like it and it's up to you which you decide is going to be the right side or the wrong side. And then we're simply going to sew them together. Now we've left, we've opened this up because otherwise you'll end up with a devil of a job trying to turn it the right way around. So we're just going to do a simple over sew all the way around using the thinner yarn. So starting at either end of the zip, it really doesn't matter. You'll just see where that stitch was before. We're just going to double it up. And we'll go through again just to get it really secure. There. And then we're just going to over sew. So you just come, let's have a get this nice and closed. You just go in and around. There we go. All the way. And we're going to do this all the way around. I should have cut these bits off, shouldn't I? 
Now as you get to a pin, you can see, nice colour, take it out and there's reasons for that. Obviously you don't want pins left in your piece of work. But also, if you leave the pins in all the way to the end, what you'll find is as you get further round, this yarn will start catching on all the pins that you've left in and that's just a real pain. So we're just going to go all the way around until it's completely sewn up. Now so that we don't end up with massive stitches on the other side, we're going to do what's called invisible stitching, where you're not going all the way through the fabric to the other side, and it's, this wool's really good for that because you can simply pick up a bit of a stitch rather than going all the way through. It's not the end of the world if you do see stitches through the other side because we have the decorative option where we can do some decorative stitching on the outside and that will cover it up. But this is a good stitch to master anyway. So you're not just stabbing the needle through and taking up large bits of fabric. You're taking a little bit of fabric here and a little bit of fabric there. And sure, it does take a little bit longer, but the finish will be really nice. And if every now and then you do let a stitch go through, it's not the end of the world. Like I say, we've got the option for the decorative stitch, but in reality, maybe people won't even notice anyway. So we're just going to keep going all the way around. So I've sewn all the way around. So now it's time to turn it the right way around. So it can be a little bit of a shove through that hole. We push the corners out. There's a pin I left behind. And that's the basis of the cushion cover with the zip. Now we're not going to worry too much about these bits. We're going to use them a bit later. So I'll show you the next bit. We're going to put the cushion inside. So this bit can look a little bit brutal. Basically we're just ramming the cushion in through and then we stretch it out. Okay, there we go. And then we do the zip up. And hit there is our cushion, our easy peasy, hug me, squeeze me cushion.